Hello everyone, welcome to ECMATH. Today we're going to talk about the true meaning of absolute value. So this uh, little video is something that we're going to do a lot in Math 4, which is take an idea that you've maybe seen before, but really try to express it rigorously as a function or, or as something that you can work with mathematically. Um, there's a lot of ideas that we've maybe understood and maybe understood very well, but haven't understood them as their true mathematical objects or with their true mathematical meaning. An absolute value is one of those. So I'd like us to stop and pause, and maybe you can pause the video right now, and think about what does absolute value really mean? Maybe write something down. You probably have an answer, and here are some of the common answers that I hear when I ask students this question. Uh, we'll go all three at once. Common answer one is that it's something that makes things positive. Common answer number two is it's something that similarly can't be negative. And the thing I hear a lot is people say, aha, well, I know what the real answer is. It's the distance from zero. The distance from zero of a number um, is the absolute value. And those are all true, sort of, kind of, but they're also not hugely mathematically rigorous. Um, so, for example, makes things positive. Well, what about three, right? Three is already positive. So the absolute value of three, did that do anything? Did it make it positive? Or did it just do nothing? Was it useless there? Uh, same idea. Absolute value can't be negative. Well, sure, the, the three there is true, and uh, the result of an absolute value calculation is usually not negative. But what if uh, we're going to see this a lot? What if there's an expression like opposite absolute value of opposite four? Well, work from the inside out, that would be four. But the opposite out front is still there. That's not inside the absolute value. So this is still something that gives you an expression that gives you a negative result, even though it had an absolute value in it. So the idea that absolute value just can't be negative is actually, uh, I think, harmful. It, the people that really think about absolute value only in this way often get problems wrong. Um, and the idea that it's a distance from zero, actually, that's correct. But it's a little more complicated than that, because absolute value can also give you the distance between any two numbers. It doesn't have to be zero, uh, which I find very interesting. Okay, so what does absolute value really mean? Well, here is what our book says about absolute value, and this is that, that mathematical definition that we're going to use. So let's take this apart. Um, this is our first example of something that we will call a piecewise function. A piecewise function is a function that is defined differently depending on the values of x. Uh, and so it's a function that's in pieces. Uh, and we actually do use a little bit of set notation to say, hey, this function is defined as a set of other functions. It's kind of like a super function. Um, and the way you read a piecewise function is this is the function value. And over here after the if, and sometimes the if is omitted and it's written with just a comma, um, this is the domain on which that function should be drawn. Uh, so absolute value is a piecewise function where if the input x is larger than or equal to zero, nothing changes, right? You can say absolute value of x equals x kind of means no change. And that's if x was already positive. However, if x is less than zero, then the absolute value of x is its opposite. So what does that mean? Well, that's saying, hey, the absolute value of x is opposite x. What uh, opposite x? That means change the sign if x is less than 0. So what this piecewise function is saying is that the real definition of absolute value uh, says, first, decide if x is positive or negative. If it's positive, do nothing. You can get rid of the absolute value bars. If x is negative, you take the inside of the absolute value, make it take its opposite. So right, remember that this negative x doesn't mean that x is negative. It means opposite. Uh, so if x is less than zero, you take the opposite of x and then get rid of the absolute value bars. And that's going to be our real definition of absolute value. It's our first example, too, of a piecewise function. Go ahead and take a second and write that definition down. I'm going to scroll away from it, but we're going to use it in about six examples here. And these are examples like you will see on your homework. We'll start real slow and work up to it. Um, the absolute value of 2. Okay, so you probably know what the absolute value of 2 is, but I'm going to use our piecewise function definition. 2 is greater than 0. 
So I'm going to use the definition that absolute value of x is equal to x. I'm using the first line, let's scroll back up, of the piecewise definition because that's uh, the condition that was satisfied. So then the absolute value of 2 is equal to 2. There is no change. Okay, let's keep going. Absolute value of negative 80, again, you probably know what that is, but since negative 80 is less than 0, the absolute value of x should equal the opposite of x. So what's the opposite of negative 80? Well, it's going to be the opposite of negative 80, which is equal to positive 80, which you already knew, again, but that's just an example of how to use this definition. Um, now, taking the absolute values of numbers, that's kid stuff. We're usually, then the thing that, that tricks people up is that we're working with variables or irrational numbers or other types of expressions where you can't just look at it. And that's uh, what the next couple of examples are. All right, so absolute value of A if A is greater than 4. So I don't know what A is, but I have some other rule from it. Maybe I, I learned this from a graph or it was in the given somehow. Well, if A is greater than 4, then A, a is definitely greater than 0. So the absolute value of A will equal A. Right? And that's, again, using that piecewise definition. What about absolute value B if B is less than minus 5? Okay, that's definitely less than 0. So I'm definitely going to have to use the idea that absolute value of B is equal to opposite B. That would be my answer. Now, it's a little weird because uh, absolute value can't be negative. You're right. That's true. But remember that since B was was negative, negative b is positive. And that's how we kind of work, work with this idea of absolute value of variables and unknown things. Okay, let's keep going. Um, these, I know there's problems like this in your book, it might even be this exact problem. When you see something like this, you work it in the same way you did before. You look at the inside and say, is 6 minus pi greater than 0 or equal to or less than 0? Because that will tell you what to do. Now, 6 minus pi, pi is about 3.1. We'll just say 3.1. So 6 minus pi is greater than 0. So we'll use the top definition where we say absolute value of x is equal to x. Now, in this case, 6 minus pi is the x. So the absolute value of 6 minus pi should just equal 6 minus pi. Specifically because 6 minus pi we estimate to be larger than 0. You don't have to know what it is. If you use your calculator to get the exact decimal, that actually is a less good answer because you know, your, your pi is an irrational number and it would be rounding. This is our way to do this without any rounding. All right, what about 1 minus square root of 2? I need to, again, ask myself, is... 1 minus root 2 greater than or equal to 0 or less the same symbol less than 0 question mark I need to answer that question well 1 minus root 2 root 2 is about 1.414 um, and if you need to use your calculator to check just that that's okay um, so 1 minus that is definitely going to be less than 0 okay so what do I do here this is, this is this, by the way, I'll put a big star on problems like this. This is where students start to get problems wrong, um, is, is when the complex thing inside turns out to be less than zero. So then the definition says that the absolute value of 1 minus root 2 is going to equal, because it's less than zero, we have this definition. So absolute value 1 minus root 2 will be the opposite of whatever was inside. You could leave it like that, but it's a little rude right now. It, it should be simplified a little bit. How about negative 1 plus root 2? And I would simplify it one more step. How about root 2 minus 1? It's just to get rid of that trailing. It's really easy when you leave a subtraction in the front for it to disappear into the world of bad handwriting. So it's nice to switch it around. And this is how you'll usually see the answers written. That's how I know how the book gives them. Um, it's just a little bit of algebra afterwards. So uh, that is how you solve problems like this. Um, that's probably where I would focus your energy. I know the book uh, has a couple other examples of problems like that as well.
that you can look over. Uh, and then the last flavor of problem is stuff where, uh, kind of like before, but a more complicated expression with x. So I have x over 2 absolute x. Totally something that we could ask you to graph or work with in Math 4, not out of the realm of possibility. Um, but say we also know that x is less than 0, maybe from the givens again, or it's, you know, it's given right here. So if x is less than 0, then the definition says that absolute value of x is equal to opposite x. I can use this to replace absolute value x with opposite x. So this, because x is less than 0, will simplify to x over 2 times opposite x. Now you can simplify this further. x over opposite x reduces out to 1 with a negative down there. So this is going to be like 1 over negative 2, or possibly negative 1 half. That's how I would give that answer. Uh, so that whole expression simplifies to negative 1 half, with a little bit of fraction work and a little bit of the definition of absolute value. Now, if all you care about is getting your homework done, you can probably stop the video right here and be fine on the problem sets. But there's a couple other big absolute value and subtraction ideas that I really want to share with you that I think will uh, change the way you think about absolute value even greater than we've already done. Uh, but I wanted to share with you something that I think is a really important subtraction idea that very few people seem to know about, but it can really help you with your mental math. And the idea is this. What's 6 minus 2? Well, that's 4. What's 2 minus ne uh, 6? Oh, shoot, i got to think about that one. That's negative. Oh, wait, it's negative 4. Hmm. The same answer, but opposite sign. When I switch the order of a subtraction, it seems like I get the opposite. And that's actually true always. You, know, you could prove it with some algebra if you wanted to. Um, a minus B will always be the opposite of B minus A. Or, you know, well, yeah, think about, so think about that negative, not as saying B minus A is negative, but that's the negative that means opposite. So A minus B and B minus A are always opposites. Uh, really nice, where if I'm asking you to do, oh my gosh, 5 minus 37, quick, fast. You say, Mr. Rack, I know what that is, because I know what 37 minus 5 is. That's 32, so this must be negative 32. Maybe you already do this and you don't even think about it, but it's a really helpful mental math trick. Um, but if you combine that idea with absolute value, it also means this. The absolute value of a minus b will always be the exact same as the absolute value of b minus a. Why? Well, uh, because these are opposites of each other, so that means one is positive and one is negative, but they're the same numerical value, you know, they're both equal to, to c, for example. Well, so this is equal to c, and this is equal to negative c, but when you absolute valueize them, they become the same. Um, so that's really nice, and it also gets to, to uh, maybe thinking about what does this mean, the absolute value with subtraction? It turns out that absolute value means distance. The absolute value, oop, wrong pen, the absolute value of a minus b is, can be thought of as the distance between a and b. And if you think about distance, the distance between b and a should be the same as the distance between a and b, because distance is uh, not like position. Uh, distance is, an, is a positive value all the time, which should mean that the absolute value of b minus a is the same distance. And guess what? We showed above that those are equal. So if you think about absolute value as the, of uh, subtraction, right? we are have to think about subtraction here. As a distance, it can actually let you solve a lot of problems. Uh, so here's an example of a problem that maybe you had to solve in uh, Algebra 1. Absolute value of 8 minus x equals 3. Oh, okay, so there's a thing that you do where there's a 3, and then there's also like a negative 3, and you get rid of the absolute value. I forget it. Math is hard, and my brain hurts. Wait. Let's think about it differently. This is saying, because it's an absolute value, with subtraction. What this equation sentence is saying 
is that the distance between x and 8, or 8 and x, is 3. Wait, I could solve this with a picture. Here's 8. 3 units to one side would give me 11. 3 units to the other side, because I'm doing double-sided distance, would give me 5. The answer for x is 5 or 11. And you might not even need the picture. You could probably think about that without even making the drawing without doing any algebra steps if you can think about absolute value as a distance. And that always works. It even works when you don't think you can see that subtraction sign. So here's my last example. Uh, absolute value of x plus 4 equals 2. I'm like, well, Mr. Eck, I thought you said that's only true with subtraction. I'm like, yes, it is. But you forget that we can always find subtraction. This is the same as the absolute value of x minus negative 4. And when you write it that way, what this is saying as a sentence is the distance between x and minus 4 is 2. How do you solve that? Well, I would think about, uh, I would probably do it in my head, but I would think about a number line. I would say here's minus 4, and I need to go 2 units that way. 2 units that way to get to negative 2 and negative, not 8, but 6. So x is negative 6 or negative 2. Solved pretty easily. Didn't have to think about an algebraic procedure at all. And that's the, the power of thinking about absolute value as a distance. So today we've looked at two ways of, of thinking about absolute value in a more rigorous mathematical way. The first way is as a piecewise function. Uh, that behaves differently whether x is positive or x is negative. And the second way is as a distance between two numbers. Oh, by the way, those of you that said absolute value is distance from zero, it is when you think about it in that second way where this, you know, the distance, uh, the absolute value of negative three is the same as the absolute value of negative three minus zero, okay? The distance from zero. It just happens that the minus zero is never written. So absolute value really is distance from zero, but it's just a little more complicated. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, shoot me an email or ask your teacher. You can leave uh, any comments down below. It's been a pleasure. I will see you all next time.